February is Black History Month, a time to honor the African-American past. But for many, it's also time to celebrate the future. A prominent black entrepreneur is doing just that with a multi-million dollar business and advice to help others like her along their career paths. Alexis Sita has this profile. You never know who's listening. People are listening and watching the growth of Act One Group. The black-owned Torrance-based business has annual sales of over half a billion dollars, and the person at the helm is Janice Bryant Halroyd. It probably would be the decent and very Southern girl thing to say I never dreamed that this could happen. The truth is, I always knew I could do what I'm doing now. What she's doing is running Act One Personnel, an international staffing business, and it's five affiliate companies. Harroyd began her business 25 years ago with just one phone line and $1,500, and now it's practically a 24-hour-a-day job. That every day I wake up really early when I'm at home. I usually start my emailing about 4 o'clock. Yes, Howroyd means 4 o'clock in the morning. And with offices set to open in the U.K. and in South America, this personnel maven needs to be that committed to Act One's continued success. In fact, that's the cornerstone of her work philosophy. I think commitment is the strongest value anyone can have, whether it's to your work, to building your own business, or to building your life as part of a family. She's also married and a working mother, Balancing life and work is something she's accustomed to doing and talking about. You can balance things, but balance doesn't always mean 50-50. Sometimes balance is 30-70, sometimes it's 20-80. But it's about organizing your life in a way that allows you to breathe. She also understands that just by looking at her, she might make it look easy. But for Halroyd, raising children and working was definitely a juggling act. I won't make it sound easy for anybody. I don't want to come off as being a shero who's just got it so together that other people can't understand there were some real sacrifices and some real efforts in that. Harroyd's business continues to expand, and now she's finding she can have an impact outside of just the corporate world. She recently received the prestigious BET Honors Award and wanted to embrace the recognition not only for herself. I was thinking about all the young people who I know who watch BET, and I was thinking I'd love to be able to share with them that they can do something and they can get all dressed up and receive an award, and they don't have to have a talent that's singing or dancing or playing ball. But does she have it all? Having it all, well, it is a very hard to define thing. The one thing I do know is that you can have it all if you're prepared to earn it all. It will not be given to you. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Alexa Sita. An author discovered an unlikely World War II hero and shares her findings in a new book. Alexa Sita tells us more. This story has become something of a footnote in history, and it needs to be on the front burners. The story Joanne Oppenheim speaks of is the Japanese incarceration. And the story she tells in her book, Dear Miss Breed, is of one woman who helped ease the lives of young people forced to relocate during World War II. Oppenheim visited the Torrance Library recently to discuss children's librarian Clara Breed and the correspondence she had with her Japanese-American library patrons. During their incarceration, Breed began to send the children books. The book soon became more than a way to pass the time. They became the children's lifeline to the outside world. Two and a half years I wrote to Miss Breed. I was 17 at that time. From the letters, Breed received firsthand accounts of what it was like to live in the internment camps. The children told her of the troubling conditions, like sleeping in horse stables at Santa Anita Park or having to wait in long lines for food and use of the bathroom. Author Oppenheim was saddened by what she learned from Breed's correspondence. Until researching the book, she knew little of this time in America's history. In fact, she stumbled upon the story while trying to find a former Japanese-American classmate online. She believes fate brought her to Miss Breed's story. And besides its historical value, Oppenheim has even higher hopes for her book. I hope that it will tell another generation what can happen when we forget what our Constitution stands for, what we stand for as a country. 
The story of Clara Breed and the children she helped is an emotional one, especially for those who lived through it. But from the long line of fans waiting for Oppenheim's signature or from the packed house of eager listeners, the relevance of the story for so many people today is clear. For City Cable 3, Alexis Sita reporting. And finally, we recently had the opportunity to meet a great lady on a special day. Marie Hickman is a Torrance resident who just turned 100 years old. And while we all wonder what the secret to longevity is, Hickman and her friends reveal that the secret may just be following the golden rule. Alexis Sita explains. <laughs> Marie Hickman is celebrating a milestone. 100 years ago, she was born. Well, it's hard for, for me to imagine somebody being born in 1907. And as we all clamor to find the secrets to longevity, she has some explanation for her long life. I said, well, Marie, you're starting your 101st year. Um, any words of advice for us? I think I'll let Marie tell you what she told me. You remember, Marie? I think I said, Good, clean living. We didn't have uh, wild parties. We didn't drink. I was always a great walker. And she loves chocolate and eats it just about every day, so she thinks that has a lot to do with her getting to be 100. That all may have played a part in Marie's longevity, but at her birthday party at senior residence Coleman Quartz, friends and family praise something more than just her healthy habits. She loves people. I've often described her as being a person who could walk into a closet and come out with a friend. She has never spoken a mean word. She's never said anything in a negative, gossipy way. You can't help but get to know Marie. She is a true people magnet. Grandma was always positive. Um, rather than the half-empty mentality, she maintained a glass is half full. And when I was moving here from the other apartment, I had forgotten my keys and I had left my daughter-in-law and a couple of people that was helping me in the hallway and Marie came out and invited them in to go to her house and she didn't know them, she just knew that I was a new tenant and we were moving in. She's a wonderful lady. So maybe the friendship she's formed and her positive attitude towards life should get more of the credit for her resilience. I just want to thank everybody for their wonderful friendship because I feel like I have a lot of them right here in this building. I've known others that have reached this age, and that's the common denominator. They're all very loving human beings. They don't hold a grudge. They don't stay angry. They let things go, and I think we can all learn from that. And maybe the old-fashioned golden rule is better than any magic cream or pill. There has to be some connection to longevity and uh, an inner peace. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Alexa Sita.